Hello YouTube world, this is Logic Crazy and I'm Jonathan and here is yet another tutorial on creating a Java chess engine and in this tutorial we will be working on uh, debugging and making sure that this alpha beta algorithm or any algorithm um, of alpha beta works and I will be providing general uh, tactics to figure it out. Now there's several ways and I'll just go through a couple ways that we won't use uh, or uh, one way anyway, um, and that is uh, when you click uh, on the side here and you put uh, arrows or squares here, what they, those basically do is put stops. Um, for instance, let me demonstrate this. Uh, if I were to run this in debugging mode, uh, you will notice, um, well, not there, we haven't uh, called this, but let's say right here. Uh, if I ran it, you'd notice the code would stop when it hits there. And you could hit F8 or click this button, and it would run to the next line, and so on. And there's different uh, options. You could run to the cursor, or step in and out. So stepping in would actually, instead of just running the make move, it would jump to the make move and go through that line by line, and such. And that would be stepping in. Stepping out would be stepping out of the make move procedure, and so on. So that's uh, one way of uh, debugging. Oh, and another thing, um, while you're doing that, um, you get your output here. Um, but you also get your variables. You can watch them live. Um, and you can look at your static variables. So king position C is 60 currently. And you can run this through and those variables will update. And you can also add watches. So you could type in uh, whatever whatever variable that you're watching and it'll just display those key ones right there. Um, anyways, that's some uh, debugging techniques. But in this one what we're going to do is manufacture something. Um, I have here on uh, Firefox, a, uh, I just uh, searched uh, Alpha Beta, uh, Google search, and I pick in the top site, uh, Wikipedia, and I scroll down and I see a picture. And you can find these uh, different places and different diagrams, and it's good to compare a couple of them. So maybe after I've finished, uh, feel free to try out another two, couple of them, and uh, uh, so on. And what we're going to do is basically this diagram, someone has spent the effort to work on it and say, okay, according to this uh, algorithm, this is what where it should cut off. It should cut off these sections of this tree. Now, uh, what we want to do is artificially create the same tree. So when it, it'll have a depth of this, this will have this many moves. On this one, there'll be three moves. This will give a rating of seven. This spot will give a rating of four. And we want to see if we can come back and return a value of 6. That would be a big indicator that our method, our algorithm is working. Um, now how do we artificially do this? Well what we're going to do is give uh, our program an input. So we'll manually input at each uh, rating spot this first the value 5, then 6, and 7, 4, and on and on and on. Now how do we do input? We're familiar with output. System dot out. And uh, what we're going to have is uh, effectively a system dot in. Now, uh, here is how we're going to do it. Let's start off with this rating. Um, way down at the bottom, I believe, somewhere. Uh, wherever rating is. No idea, actually. Uh, there it is. Just a little thing there. Right now we return zero, but uh, um, what we're going to do is put in a little thing called scanner. This is uh, how you input text in the uh, console or uh, command prompt uh, type thing. So this is where you get output, you also do input. Um, we're going to do scanner, we'll call a scanner SC, you can call it anything you want, and we'll say the scanner is a new scanner, um, and then system.in as opposed to what we normally write as out. All right, so we create a scanner. This is something that uh, allows you to input text, or in this case, an integer. We're going to say int, uh, or we're going to just actually return. Return, and then sc dot, uh, whoops, dot next int. Now, if you do next int, it'll receive whatever you type as a number. So if you put in text instead, like the word dog, it would produce an error. This next is what you do if you just want a string. So it's uh, perhaps the least uh, 
the most forgiving. Um, you can put in numbers or anything and it returns it in string format. But uh, we want to receive an input, so don't type in uh, some fancy words. You will get errors. Uh, all right. So that is uh, what we do there. Um, and now the rating will do this. Now we want to add one other thing here, and that is a system dot out dot print line, uh, and we'll or not print line. We want print. That way the input will be on the next line and such, or on the same line. Sorry. Um, um, what is the score? All right, and I put a space there just so that, and then the number you will input it. The cursor will be right about here-ish uh, after this space. And you type in your number, hit enter, and then uh, it returns that num that input in its integer form. Um, all right, so that's what happens with rating. So whenever it calls rating, it will ask us to give a value. And we will say, ah, this thing says if I give a 5 and then a 6 and so on, it'll return eventually a 6 is my final rating. Um, and there's one other thing we need to do, and that is the length of how many moves are there. So at this spot, there's three. If we had four or five, it could make a difference. Let's say there was just two. Then it wouldn't ask us all these questions, all these fives, uh, um, which come from this lower five. Remember, we only get ratings from the bottom, and that returns upward uh, according to the algorithm rules. Okay, um, so we need to input something. So I'm going to get rid of this string list as possible moves. Instead, I'm just going to make it a string list equals, and I'm just going to put a oops, a 1 there. And the only reason I do that is that it never gets triggered by string length is 0, because these uh, uh, diagrams usually never uh, show a, an example of that, um, and we don't care to show that. All right, um, now what we will do is after this, we'll now set the list. So we'll say list equals, let's just make it empty now. And then we need to do one other thing. Now we need to do a scanner thing. Uh, I'll actually go to the rating and just copy the scanner. I'll copy all this stuff. Go back to the alpha beta since I don't want to type this out again and print out, um, this time we're printing out oops, how many moves are there. OK. Um, and now we say uh, int temp equals scanner this. And then we'll do a for loop. For int i equals 0, i is less than temp i plus plus. Now for each of those, list plus equals, and then remember there's 5, so I'm just going to put 1, 1, 1, 1, b. Um, we, all we want to really do is, uh, so now let's say if I pick uh, five moves, for five times it'll add this string to it. So it'll eventually have, so when it goes through this loop, for each one of these, it'll go through five of them, uh, five of the moves, since there are only five. Um, and uh, um, the one, 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 I, I, I have to put something there so that the make move will not generate an error. So if you don't have a, you need digits at first, and then uh, I put a letter. I'm not sure what would happen if I put a number, but um, I just put a anything there, just so that it doesn't produce an error on the make move, because we don't really care what the board looks like. Uh, we just want to make sure the diagram is accurate. And then we also need to call it. Right now, if I were to run this program, it would run and it would be done. Um, without asking for input. And the reason is I need a system, I want to return the uh, dot print line, and then alpha, so I need to call this alpha beta thingy. And I 
saying print it because I want to re I want to at the end check if it returns it'll be a move followed by a six. So it could be uh one, two, three, four, uh P six. Whatever. Um that sort of thing. Now what are the parameters? Well if you remember you need an alpha and a beta initially, and they're very large or very small numbers. And uh uh, that's how it starts, and slowly these numbers get closer to each other. If you remember my last uh, video, I, I sort of described all of that. And so what we need to do is the first one, I'm going to just set it to 1 million. So that's six zeros, and then negative 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. There we go, six zeros. And then not null, but I'll have an empty string for, I believe that would be the move, and then uh, zero there for player, and global depth is good. And we had global depth as four. Now, uh, you can instead, uh, just uh, if you're interested, uh, one million and negative one million, we set those to values that the score, the rating can never hit to. Now obviously we'll be inputting low numbers, you know, five, six, all one digit numbers, but uh, when we make a rating thing, what if it returns a value of 10,000? Well, we want to make sure our initial bounds are bigger than that. Now, there are reasons that you make it smaller, such as, I believe, if it's the uh, something about window, null window uh, things, but anyway, uh, to make it smaller, but we won't be focusing on that. Um, there is an option, instead of, if you think these numbers aren't smaller, uh, you can do uh, integer dot max value and that'll provide and then there's min value for the opposite that'll provide the biggest number and the smallest number that can re be represented as an integer which is a 32-bit uh, number so you can only store so big a number in 32 bits I mean uh, it would take an infinitely number of bits to truly write you know some of the largest prime numbers out there or whatever or uh, or write infinity itself and so we just you never really get all the way there you just write a number as big as fit into 32 bits which is still uh, millions or billions I forget I don't know exactly what it gets into um, but anyway um, so we start off like this now let's see what happens I'm just gonna uncheck mark that and run this and uh, I should say that the global depth static thing uh, make sure you have it at the right amount. You'll notice we have it at four, and that works for this, because we start at here at depth of zero, depth of one, two, three, and four. So hopefully it'll ask us there. Now I'll put my window over here, and let's see if we can run this correctly. Just make this nice and big. All right, how many moves are there? Good question. Three initially. There's three lines protruding out of this six. All right, how many moves are there now? And notice we start, we go left. So we go down this trail first, then this one, then this one, then this one, then this one, and so on. And then we jump all the way down these threes, and then six, and so on. So now there's two. Now there's again two. And again two. Now it asks for the score. Good. So we first put in a five, and then we put in a six. Excellent. Now it asks for moves. Now it knows there's two here, so it's asking for this one here. Um, so we put in a, how many moves? Now notice it's a cutoff. It does the first two, and it cuts off everything remainder. So I'm going to take a gamble here and say it, tell it that there's ten. And it should only ask for the first two and cut off all the future ones. But if it asks for the score met ten times, or more than two times, we know we have a problem. So I give it 10, whoops, um, all right, a little bit of difficulties there, okay, so it asks, so I tell it there's 10, so we give it a value of 7, and then it asks how many moves there are, so we already know that we have a little bit of an error because it should have asked what is the score for the next one. It should have asked that. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to stop the code and we're going to run it in debugging mode. And again, quickly go through 3, 2, 2, 2, the score of 5, the score of 6, and then um, 10, yes, 5, 6, 10, the score of 7. But here we're going to stop the code, uh, pause it. So we know where is the code going to be. Well, it's going to be returning this string. So um, go back to output and put in a 7. Now, the value is now ah, negative 7. Now there is our issue, I believe. What we need to do is for this test, we need to get rid of this negative thingy, this thing that negates it, because our scores are not dependent on that, uh, perhaps. Let's see if this works. Two, 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 five, six, if I remember right, 10, seven, Yes, it asks for a score again. So that could have been the issue, just because this is not uh, doing the negating thing. Anyway, um, seven, and then four. Good, and it does not ask for another score. You would have thought it would have gone for 10 of these, but it pruned off everything from it. Now it's asking, how many moves are there? Now where are we on the tree? Well, it knew there were two already there, so we got to tell it it's one one there and then we got to tell it this one has one there as well and then the score is three so so far it's matching this thing exactly now how many moves are there so now we're done this entire side we're going to the middle there's two moves and then there's two moves again and then there's one move and the value is six and now on this side, we're going to put in again. We're, let's put in 12. And we say the score is 6. And good, it asks for moves again. So now where is it asking? Well, it knew there was 2 there, so there's 1 here. 1, and then 1 again, and we give it a value of 7. That's right here. Now how many moves? We're talking here. So we're going to tell if there's 10 or 11. Let's just keep switching these numbers up. Now how many are there? There's 1 and there's 1. And the score is 5. And it should quit after I hit enter. Let's see what happens. Enter. It quits. And it returns the move. Obviously all the moves are 1, 1, 1, 1, B. So uh, we don't know if that it necessarily was the best move uh, or which move we're talking about, I guess. But it returns 6. So it returns a move and then the value of 6, and that is exactly what this square here should be. This is the exact test. Now I'm going to just undo my moves here so that this player thing is back in there um, because that will be necessary for the way we have programmed this. But anyway, um, this looks like our alpha beta is actually doing what people say it should do, assuming, of course, this diagram is correct. Um, but uh, you can just... Uh, Hope for the best. I've never had a diagram that wasn't correct, actually. Um, but test it against some others if you like. This is how we test things um, and uh, in uh, chess making. You don't first start out by testing, oh, did it beat me or not, or how's its, rate, how's its uh, strength as a program. You test each individual component to make sure they are all working. Because if this didn't work, um, then, and perhaps other things don't work, it's hard to... Uh, detect it. So uh, that's this tutorial. It looks like we typed in alpha beta correctly. Um, I hope you can uh, make some modifications perhaps, um, uh, do some uh, cool uh, uh, improvements, whatever you can find. Uh, please get rid of the uh, scanners and stuff when you're done because we'll start the next tutorial uh, assuming that uh, it will manually put stuff in. All right, so until next time, enjoy Java.